Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This week I wanted to discuss the topic of being an empath versus being a codependent. I've put out a video before on codependence where I've explained it thoroughly. But one of you guys got in touch and asked, um, saying that, you know what, I know that I'm not a codependent because I don't have those tendencies and I don't have this need to be needed. But I seem to attract all the people who are like energy vultures and sort of broken souls. Um, so because I feel like I'm a bit of an empath and I just seem to attract those. So what's the difference and how do we manage being an empath and not getting carried away with other people's emotions and feelings? If you haven't been to my channel before, welcome back. Please press the subscribe button and follow this page. In this little corner of the internet, we talk about personal development and overall mental and emotional well-being. Hi. So if you feel like you're an empath or a codependent or both, then this video is definitely for you. So what does it mean being an empath? Being an empath means you just feel everything much more deeply. You're a lot more attuned and sensitive to other people's emotions and problems. And you just really, um, you're very compassionate and you really empathize with people. So you just feel everything a lot more intensely. And you seem to take people's emotions in and hear them out and really understand what they're feeling. But when someone is a codependent, the difference is that they don't only take the other person's emotions in, they also take that on. So they feel that it's their responsibility to then fix this issue. It's not just enough for them hearing and being there and understanding, um, like an empath would, the difference is that you solely now feel like this is your duty to fix this person's problems. Major key point between an empath and someone who struggles with codependence is that as an empath, when you listen to your friend and you're there for someone and you are involved in their situation, you're involved as a shoulder to cry on, as a support system, but not as someone who's there to fix the problem. Whereas when it comes to a codependent, they now feel that this is their responsibility. They've been given a chore and therefore they take that upon themselves to take, do whatever that may take and stop at nothing to try and fix your problems. And that's not their job to do. But because they need you to be okay, for them to be okay, because their emotional validation and well-being is so dependent, hence the key word codependence, is that they need you to be okay. So therefore, it's their task to make sure that you're okay. Another key difference is that a codependent always feels that they can't really give their honest, true opinion to someone because they don't want to offend them they don't want to be seen as a bad person or not a good friend because then that may trigger the other person and they will not be happy with you and you can't accept other people not being happy with you. Whereas an empath could probably sit and give honest advice, um, say that I understand your issue and I can try and help you and find you solutions and I feel like this is where you're doing going wrong and this is what you're doing is right. Whereas a codependent wouldn't necessarily point out the wrongs because they don't want to trigger that person because their emotions are so merged with the people around them. Also, being an empath does not mean that you don't care about people or that you don't care enough or that you could just be like, oh, well, I'm sorry you feel this way, but really this doesn't affect me. So I'm just going to move on and do my thing. It just means that you're supportive, you're there your understanding of other people's situations, but you also ha know the difference that their emotional and mental well-being doesn't affect yours. And so that your happiness and your validation is independent on someone else's emotional state. You're supportive, you're there, you're going to try and help, but you can't fix other people. No one can. That work has to come from that person not you. It's not your responsibility. Not that even if you tried, you cannot. Um, and you understand that and you accept that. Okay, I'm not here to fix your problems, but I'm there 
every step of the way, I'm there to support you, I'm there to advise you, I'm there to be there for you, but it's not my place to fix it. Okay, so how do we stay empaths without walking on this codependence territory where you're now losing your identity, you are dependent on other people's feelings and emotions, and you've kind of lost yourself running around trying to please other people? Because there's nothing wrong with being an empath, but it's not healthy for the person who's a codependent. So that's why we need to know that, okay, this is being empathic, but then this is where my boundary is. And after this point, I'm just being taken for a fool. So it's important to know the difference. And the first thing is to let people have their feelings and respect that. So as a codependent, like I said, you constantly feel like it's your responsibility to fix other people's issues. But to understand that boundary um, and not to put pressure on the other person, because if they're coming to you with their problems and you suddenly is like, right, we have to do this and I'm going to fix it like this, da, 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 da. Now, the other person who has the problem is feeling like so much pressure is on them to feel better because they could see you running around and put all this effort and trying to make it better for them. So they feel the pressure to feel better and to say that, no, 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 I'm fine now. So... As an empath, you understand and respect that I'm going to hear you out. I'll do whatever I can to support you. But if you're feeling like this, it's okay to feel like that. And it's okay for you to digest that. And you don't, we don't have to find a solution for it right away. Sometimes you just need to feel these things. And that's okay. So that's one of the things. The second thing would be to set boundaries. I always go on about this, boundaries. So I'm going to do my next video on how to set boundaries that's going to be up next week hopefully um, and I just want to go over that again with you guys because I feel like it's so important to understand because I said this before and I'm going to say it again generosity is not generosity without boundaries because if you're trying to be generous to someone you're doing it out of the goodness of your heart but if you don't set a boundary and that person continuously takes advantage of your goodness you are then doing it because you're forced to and you're doing it because they expect you to, not because you're choosing to. So therefore, that's no longer generosity. So boundaries are very important for you to set and understand that, okay, I'm here for you. I'll do what I can to help you. But past this point, it's not my responsibility. It's yours. And you need to look into yourself, do some self-reflection, self self some self-analysis, and really be aware of your situation and things that you could do to make yourself feel better and heal yourself. By setting boundaries to your friends and family and people around you, it's not about you being selfish and just saying no all the time. It's about meaning it when you say yes and you're comfortable with it. And you're also very comfortable with saying no when someone or something doesn't suit you or you're busy or you don't want to be involved and not feeling guilty like just because you're saying no, you're a bad person. And people who really truly appreciate, respect and love you won't have a problem. I have to be honest, it will be a little bit uncomfortable because change is never easy. And even if it's a dysfunctional sort of relationship, it's kind of functional for the people involved. It works. So when you bring change or a different boundary in, not everybody could usually accept that. Most people that care about you in no time will adjust and respect and accept it. But the ones who really don't or don't like it, then means that that means that their relationship with you was really based on what you could do for them. And the minute you can't, they don't really appreciate that relationship anymore. So that's not something you need anyway. So when it comes to being empathic, if you set those boundaries and be present for your friend or whoever that is that's turning to you, um, help them out, be in the process with it, but be stay detached. And you've set those boundaries and you understand that, no, past this point, it's not me anymore, it's you. So there's a detachment emotionally from you, yet you're there, present and supportive. The next thing would be to start differentiating yourself and having your own identity. What happens is that when we depend our emotions on other people and merge our feelings and identity with our people around us, like your partner, your spouse, your friends, you kind of tend to lose yourself because you haven't had the opportunity to really figure yourself out about the things that you like and dislike and who you are and what's right for you, what's not. Even if it goes against the grain a little bit, I mean, look at me, for example, always tried to be rebellious with everything that I did um, according to my culture and background. 
Um, but, you know, here I am, I'm fine. And the people around me who really love and support me are still there loving and supporting me. So if you are determined to be your authentic self, you shouldn't let the opinion of other people to really define you or dictate how you should carry yourself or what to feel or how to feel. So when you have your own individuality and have your own opinions and you know your likes and dislikes, then it's much easier for you not to be so emotionally involved and dependent on other people's um, likes and dislikes and identity. And when you know yourself well and you know what you stand for and your worth and value, you then understand that you don't constantly need to do things for people for you to add worth and value to who you are in their eyes. You don't need to constantly please them and do things for them, for them to be your friend or for them to be in your life. So when you have your own individual identity and your worth, you then do what's right for you and how you feel. And those people around you will be there and accept it. And your friendships won't be based on what you bring to the table, but more so the person that you are. I hope that I explained the difference between being a codependent and needing the validation and being an empath and being an overall compassionate and helpful person. It's all good to, to be helpful and to be compassionate, but if it starts affecting your happiness and emotional and mental state, then you are not doing anybody any favors because you cannot fill other people's cups when you're running on empty yourself. So that's the difference. Be empathic, be helpful, but always within boundaries and always understand that it's not your job to fix people. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to comment and like this and please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you guys here again next week. Mwah.